Diamond Dealers in pursuit, then came Pioneer River, Astero making ground towards the inside as Diamond Dealer takes the lead from Astero late on the scene, Diamond Dealer from Astero, Diamond Dealer won the last from Astero. Welcome to Bet Doctor Behind the Curtain, look at how pro punters operate, I'm your host Scoot, I'm joined in uh, the Gold Coast, been a thunder and uh, lightning sort of night, a uh, friend of his house, he reckons he got hit by lightning, I thought it was off the coast, it's come from the west, Walt's been up all night, rattled. You're a vampire anyway, you don't sleep. 90 minutes is probably 30 minutes less than I know. I need the two hours minimum, but uh, yeah, I thought we got struck about 83 times. But the, there's nothing better than the, the blackout and then you're trying to remember what lights you had on or not and then when the lights come back on and it's like Luna Park, as you, oh, Jesus Christ. It was about 2.15 a.m. the first time, then about 4.30 a.m. alarms going off and it just, yeah, welcome to this. We like, normally not, not get a few rain, of those man. during summer, don't we? But it's... um. A very strange time of year to be getting a electrical storms, but it was good fun. It's been bugger or rain. If we've just been getting these weird sort of isolated uh, sort of sun showers, the lights would have been out at uh, your house last night, DK. Big birthday and blew the candles, did all that sort of stuff. Happy birthday, mate. Well, oh, thanks, Scooty. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, getting old. One more to the big one for 49. So uh, anyway, if you're getting old now, but um, yeah, felt every bit of it after what I've been through the last 10 days. I tell you what, bloody hell, absolute nightmare. That's what you have, colic or crook guts or yeah, flu or everything. Is, yeah, it was put, put me on my backside, whatever it was. I'm only, and I'm not getting, well, I haven't got better quick. I've been getting better at about rate of about 5% a day. But it's still. crazy. All the ways, uh, there's so many ways you can get beat. Yesterday they got called off at uh, Warwick Farm. Heaven's opened. Uh, a couple of good stories out of me there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, was it a mother daughter combo won the won the staying race? Owens, yeah, was yeah, it, uh, yeah Maddie, Maddie and Karen Owens. Yeah, that was that was a pisser, and then uh, Jay Max out the back with uh, the Waterhouse train runner there. So it was uh, it's an interesting day. It was uh, a couple of good winners at Sandown as well. Nico's Nico's stuck in the Monash car park. He's uh, there's a truck on fire on the M1 down in Melbourne. So Nico's going to pop into the show at some stage, but got no idea when he's going to turn up and it's uh it's disappointing because uh the boys are right behind uh this new concept that's got tongues wagging it's not a I uh saw trav Jeez, you, you, you sound in. like you work for bloody dot com who you yeah oh, well so i i don't know about you dk but i reckon remember 1992 when let's all open better loosen you up. can I remember think, 1992 i can i was nine you can remember it yeah yeah i can remember it and let's all open and, and better loosen up ran there's a picture up on the screen I think Let's Elope uh, just – I think she won by about a neck. That's the old photo. That's a big neck. Caulfield. Oh, sorry, a length, I meant. That's a big but, neck. But um, <laughs> I can remember the like, the hype like through the week. My dad was excited. I can remember seeing him, like the two names in the form guide. Like, Let's Elope was one of the first horses that got me sort of sucked into horse racing. Obviously, trained by Bart. She was a superstar. I think they raced for 75000 this day. DK, you could remember this, wouldn't you? Oh, I remember I – remember, actually, I remember 92 for different reasons – with the goat retiring yesterday because the goat's my vintage. So, 92, I remember Brother Doug got me, Croft, and Grant. We said, we've got to go to Caulfield Cup, though. Got to back the end across. I'm absolute moral. So, he says, all right, I'll take you, I'll take you. So, left the boarding school at Kilmore, go to Caulfield, back the end across, moral, go down to the 200 metre mark to watch it win. Comes around the outside of the rail and it's coming down the home straight. We could have touched the thing, it was that wide. And then all of a sudden, it's one, hasn't it? It's one. Photo. And then he's, what, Ollie was 18, he's the same age as me. Got up on the inside of it and mannerism and blouse it in a photo. I was absolutely unconscious. <laughs> but um, oh, not me. Look, those horses, 92 was such great vintage. So that cox plate and everything. Sub zero. But, huh? Sub zero is a year two, wasn't it? That was sub zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Crazy. Having week. said that, I, you did say the hype. There was the, the actual event was far more underwhelming than the hype scoop. Like they were two champions. They're both in love with those horses, but it was a working gallop. And that's that's the only thing I'm worried about. This, this is just this would just be a tra- glorified track gallop. That's all. So there was great hype, blah blah blah, the tab challenge, whatever they called it. Um, but it was a 600 meter gallop home. You know, it was a working gallop. So mm, UFC probably less so because they're actually great contests and they're savage. But boxing is this whole sport that's completely like, built on hype. Nine times out of ten, the boxing fights, they the promotion, the smack talk, the Showtime, CBS, all those documentaries are fantastic in the lead up. But then you get to the main event and then it's all over in 15 seconds or someone's bloody not fit enough or there's a rot or, or something on. So I yeah, think it's a great enough. opportunity for racing to sort of capture the hype and then uh, it's only to New South Wales' benefit too because whatever it's happens a joke, in this. But it's, this a, it's, still, it's still a, it's it's a joke when you think about it. It's just ridiculous, 750 for a track. It's crazy, crazy prize money but for it. There's plenty like a horse that you 
Just building, exactly, hype. You can build it because I wish I wins normally 10 off him. Yeah. He's going to be on the hammer of Giga Kick who will lead comfortably. And what's going to happen then? Yeah. You know, like a, a little pipe hammer. And the, and the connections. And run home in 32. That's hmm. amazing. And the connections are mad. Like there's 750,000. Well, they've got you're... 20 million the week later or something to worry about or the Fortnite. Well, that's why, that's why Giga Kick's not going to take off at the 800. That's right. It's going to be a 400 metre race. A little cat but, and mouse. Yeah, whatever. I think it's a great thing. I, and I said, we, we said, I mean, this is again, it was this is a cat out of the bag. Uh, ideas thing that was thrown around the table. It's got out. It has. There's no legs. The connections haven't been approached. It's like that other thing we spoke about the other day. The cat got out of the bag. Don't mind the forward thinking. Love the ideas and things like that. But it, it's not going to happen now. I mean, it's the horse has got their preparations mapped out, and it's just an idea that's been thrown around. And uh, it's, it's not going to happen this year. It might happen down the track next year or something like that. But it won't happen this year. Hmm. No so way. They're going to interrupt their preparations now. These are just two. Those two horses just match up well on as uh, from an interest and height perspective. Like, yeah, I, I think it's a great. Just got to make sure that there's a bit of that about it too. It's like AFL. Like AFL of promote all these weird, stupid. You know, there's a week for everything in the AFL at the moment, but they can't make any ground up on new uh, rugby league when it comes to like Origin. All the fans want. I, th- I, I from what who I speak to, they want State of Origin AFL back on the table and. Diehard racing people, they all like this match race concept. So once you can find a couple of these big names, it's surprising that it hasn't been ha- well, it hasn't happened before because we've had nature strip roll around for the last few years. And I, I just think these like ding dong battles. Um, Did they do it down the straight, or what do they? What do they talk about doing it? Well, a Cranbourne or- this one. Is it? This, oh, this is what they've booted. Yeah, Cranbourne, and then they're going to play it at halftime of the AFL prelim. So you got the AFL. Uh, half time, whichever two sides going to go into the AFL Grand Final, playing off, and then you're just going to slot this race just in 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 beside it. I reckon it's it's sensational. But anyway, it's a shame because yeah, it sounds like I wish bill, I win. But whoever's paying the bill, hey, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> well, they spend so much money marketing on. Um, well, you get 450 if he wins the Menzi this week. Oh, uh, I wish I win, and <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, you know. Well, the Everest is 1200, yeah. 12 million. 12, uh, more, 15, isn't it? Sorry? 12 to the winner. No, it's yeah. 12 to the winner. It's a 1,200 meter, it's a 12 yeah. meter, it's a 12 meter race. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Six Why is this, I wish I win kicking off at 1,400? Uh, you know, you know, it's a 1,400's middle distance. And it, it, it's a very interesting prep to me that he's kicking off at 1,400 for a 1,200 meter grand final. I, hey, I listened to his what? interview six times, right? And yep. he goes, the 1,000 meter race or whatever the, I think it was at the car, whatever the race was called, he said it would be a much more taxing race on him than the 1,400 meter Memsey. So and he said. doesn't have to be as fit to run in the Memsey as he does in a 1,000-metre race. And, you know, you've got to respect everyone's opinion, especially someone like Peter Moody's, but that's kind of the absolute um, reverse of the way I would think oh, about things. Oh, and if I was getting uh-huh. a horse ready for a 1,200, I'm not resuming it at 1,400, but I'm not Peter Moody either. That's weird. I remember I remember old tra- Robert Smurden used to say, horses, if they're kicking off at 1,400, they are fit. They are bloody fit. You want to kick him off at 40? Look how fit oh, Mr. Brightside was the other week to cope with what he yep. put up with first up at 1,400. How fit that horse had to be to cope with that. So then he wants to kick it up at – I mean, lucky he's drawn barrier one. That's all I can say because he's going to have a very soft run. But uh, anyway. And then I think anyway. what is it? I don't know. What is it? Nine weeks and he's, he's talking about just trialling it into the Everest. So, um, yeah, it's just yeah, weird it's because to peak a horse at 1,200 second up, this would go against everything I've ever heard in my <laughs> life from any trainer. Um, but – and again, it's, yeah, like you can't knock him, can you? Like he's no, uh, he's got someone said he's got two hundred and sixty horses now, two hundred and sixty horses. Moody just creeping back into the cape, and he'll probably more when he had when he was flying. Three hundred nose rolls. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Aren't they doing good for him? Nearly. They're nearly doing good. It's interesting. One Vega one's the horse that I can recall. He wasn't. I think it wasn't he was Vega one. Was it thir- the other one? Third up. No, it was Vega. Was, you got Vega. the wrong name. Vega one was the horse trained by Golan, wasn't it? Oh, what was it called? No, it was Vegas something. It wasn't Vega 1. Vega 1 was the horse from Brisbane. Yeah, that's right. It's it's uh, Vega it Magic. Da- va- yeah, David Hayes. David Hayes trained it. So I think he was like Bletchingly, uh, Memsey, and then went into the Everest and, and but he, went yeah, pretty he went close. Second up, third up. Yeah. So this is where, this is what the way I think about racing is that a hard fit horse that's going to race closer to the speed is not as disadvantaged having a 1400 under his belt coming back to a fast run 12, whereas mm. a a sprinter, the backmarking sharp sprinter that's sort of going up and then back in distance is likely to be a bit more dour and looking for more trip, not back. So that's the way I kind of look at racing. And um, so that's like a horse, the difference in 
style of horse makes a difference to how you would want it prepared. So I would think he exactly what he said, just jag it out the back in a thousand if he runs on like he did first up last time, mm. straight into a twelve hundred Everest would have been what I expected. But yeah, I'm definitely not knocking him. Yeah. Yeah, well, Moody's the racehorse trainer. We've just got to try and figure out what they're doing. Mm. Uh, other news is that uh, the TAB, if they win the Victorian licence, they're going to try and merge the totes. So I'm not sure if, uh, what is it, Adam Rakensfield is um, living in dream world there, but uh, obviously uh, it would be like, well, trying to part, how, part how the Red Sea. How many of those same articles that. have we seen for the last 15 years from the TAB and what have they changed? Odds and evens? Well, exactly. They haven't really... Um, Improve much, but uh, be interested to see how that uh, washes out. Uh, today's show is going to be good. I think uh, Donnie is going to bounce back. He's got a couple of the tips. His horse is uh, in the Wyong Cup. When he sent through the preview, I thought he was talking about the Warren Cup. I could barely understand what he was saying, but uh, I think he's been fighting off daycare germs. He's got similar bugs to you at the moment, uh, our Donnie, but I think he's going to start lifting. Walt, uh, great bet with uh, Diamond Dealer. Uh, took a sit and got the job done. Absolutely beautiful stuff there. Very, uh, very shrewd betting there, $5 Jeez, early. It was well back late, wasn't it? I remember even yeah, halfway through late. the day it was 5 bucks and yeah, and there was money for one horse late. Holy hell. Save my bacon, definitely. Uh, got the Chelmsford this week. Walla Lotto, he's got plenty of horses in the Chelmsford and the tramway. Uh, someone wrote in and said that he's destroying racing to one of our tweets and uh, said that he's confused and just basically sits out any of those uh, big uh, big races with multiple runners. So I guess if you're a, a brand Who? new punter to racing. Oh, just, uh, Who's w- destroying racing? Chris Waller. I tuned out. Oh, okay. No, I just, <laughs> it, I just it would be the tricky. One. I guess it would be tricky. If you're a new player trying to figure out which ones to back, it would be uh, pretty tricky. Nico's in good form despite uh, being stuck in the uh, the Monash. Inhibitions was a massive go, one well. And then his other tip at uh, Big Odds, about $17 or $21 he tipped on the show, uh, the United Nations, it was settling back on the fence pretty much last and uh, ran second. So it was a massive, massive run, paid 4 bucks a place. As a uh, won't be sending Brett Preble a Christmas card, I wouldn't have thought. End cap was ridden like an absolute motorbike. That was probably one of the sickest things I've seen. I know Tom Quinton carried my weight. We mentioned on the show he went absolutely enormous in for a big prep, but um, I think that was the one that got away from end cap big time. It was well, always going to be that sort of race, wasn't it? I think Duke Cass was a bit the same. Mm-hmm. Um, there was the, the horses you wanted to find, probably wanted Ramwick, um, like end cap, uh, Rose Hill, those gates, he, you know. He nearly rode it perfect. He just probably made one or a wrong decision here and it got held up momentum. And, you know, getting it on the fence from nine or 10 was, was a huge effort and then just needed that bit of luck uh, at the right time and didn't get it. It was, as you said, a great bet. And as we mentioned, I think um, NCAP and La Vampire were uh, ridiculously, the difference in price between them was when mm. we were talking, it was like 320 and $20. Massive it go. beat, uh, NCAP beat it home comfortably and the other one was Calabasas and. Uh, yeah, it went and bad. Kintyre, yeah. and they were about the same five to two and twenties. And Kintyre's run second, so the two, two we mentioned that were ridiculous prices ran second and third. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it shows that sometimes it, it's very strange how uh, markets line up on on different runs in different races. Mm, interesting uh, form out of that one. His horse uh, struck gold ran second yesterday, or, set, or ran a placing yesterday. It uh, fought on pretty well. So he's going to have a fair bit of fun with that horse, I would have thought. But uh, he's under the knife. He's got an old footy injury that he's getting sort of scraped out. Or When he was the at the footy table. or something? When he was at the footy and he got a Barney with someone in the crowd or when he was actually playing the game? Not sure. Not sure. Still, I reckon he was poorly when he was running around with a chainsaw, but he... Tacking people. Anyway, so I'm going to super sub back in uh, my fourth uh, with Papali last week. Means I'm going to have to unretire. So I'm going to have to uh, find us a moral this weekend. Hennessy lad stopped the bleeding for me, but uh, St. Lawrence went awful or must have had some sort of issue. It uh, stopped like it was shot. So we didn't get the top sport promo over the line. I did my job. But uh, as is uh, second leg, just uh, got us. Got us beat, unfortunately. So I would have killed a plenty, a plenty of uh, multis there. Top Sport Steamers. They found, uh, I think, it was Prince Joffre in the uh, in the Adelaide uh, Steam there. So make sure you check out Top Sport this weekend, and uh, we'll go around again with another promo. Not sure. We'll we'll try and figure it out during the show and offer sort of a, a top two or some sort of insurance bet and try and find a model to uh, build the bank up again. I thought we we're home, but um, yeah, so long it's no good. So make sure you join uh, Top Sport. Um, and uh, support the other uh, bookmaker that supports us. 
we'll have a little bit of a uh, skip forward to maybe my moral segment, I think, with uh, Nico still uh, unavailable. It's stuck in traffic, but uh, Caulfield Race 7 is the Cockrum Stakes is where I think I found one here, 1,200 metres at uh, Caulfield. Benedict is a favourite, $3 into two seventy. Looks like there's a scratching. It's Espiona that's come out. Didn't think she was suited anyway. Uh, Parasol is $3.20. Say Magic is $5. Road to Ataki is $10. Laced up here, $12. Papillion Club, 50 15, Dance to Dubai, $21 and then uh, 31 for Bound for Home and then you can get much better. The rest, also I think is uh, the good thing of the weekend or a good thing at uh, Caulfield at least is Benedetta. You see Tatum Bull, the horse is absolutely bolting there. She's uh, She can sort of do it both ends, I think, here. She can sort of set f- settle forward, settle back. She's drawn barrier nine, importantly here. So and when she goes to Caulfield, she'll be definitely out of trouble. I thought Tatum uh, got the job done here perfectly. And just looking at the sectionals through punning form, I thought uh, she was probably the most vulnerable here first up. So now she's uh, a month between runs. She's going to be a lot fitter for that. I know that horse, William Thomas, who sort of flashes in behind, he was absolutely flying uh, in those couple of runs. So he met. she met uh, a couple of really hard fit horses there. I think uh, 56 kilos, she gets in super well here. So she's a horse on the rise. Uh, she's trained at Mornington, so I don't think the Caulfield track's going to be any issue. She's super honest. I can remember that, uh, that run against uh, the, the price, uh, Colt, what you need. I thought that was a ripper too. She was on the wrong side of the straight that day and still um, – Stock on really well. I think she's a class act and uh, Stackhouse uh, replaces Tatum Bulls. So it gets a nice little um, jockey upgrade there and gets conditions to suit. I thought the danger here is um, same Majik uh, from the uh, the Beggy yard, but a uh, couple of queries there. It's off 300 days. It's only had one trial. might have had a jump out that I'm, um, I haven't got to yet, but um, it's drawn the fence and it's a slow starter. So I think she'll be back and buried and uh, Benedetta is now uh, a month under the belt fitness-wise and uh, should, should show a, a clean pair of heels and and knock these over, I'd be surprised if um, if anything beats her with the 56. She's got, only got 56 kilos. She's Paracel went enormous first up. It was well, I was going to ask Walt about Paracel. As, as he didn't the slaughter last. it. Yeah, it wasn't a bad ride because of the circumstances, but he made it work the whole way and the horse just kept kept coming. Like it's, um, yeah, I, I, I want to give Jamie Carr a look for the next few weeks until she's found her sea legs. But, um, yeah, jeez, you're going to know it's in the race. Mm. So depending on how that horse bounces, um, mm. I think Benedetta could either stalk it or um, or sit in front of it. It's going to face a tougher task to sort of beat that 56 versus 58 kilos. She's just going to be super strong. And I know the camp are talking about Manicados and, and big, strong races here. So I think from the, the right profile, this up-and-coming horse just looks absolutely perfect here. And I don't think the top weights uh, can uh, can get a beat here. But uh, obviously $2.70, I think mm, that's probably – Going to be around the mark. I could see probably the bigger boys maybe stepping in and she could get to sort of $2.40 or $2.50 if they like or if they can find a reason to oppose her, which I certainly can't. Um, you, might, you might get lucky and get sort of $3 again, but uh, SB owners are scratching there and I just didn't think it was much of a chance anyway and she had 60 kilos. Do you have a look at that, Nico? Yeah, I've made it finally. Uh, yep, had a look at that and I thought uh, I was with you. I thought Benedetta's probably the horse to beat there. So, uh, yep, happy with that. Beautiful. All right. Good timing, Nico, and uh, I reckon we just uh, slot straight into your races here and uh, we're going to know most of the quaddy leagues here. Race eight is the next one and it's uh, the McCafe uh, Stakes. And so that's over 1,100 metres and Asphora is a favourite here, $3.80. Bella Nipatina, five fifty. Magic Time, $7.00. Kalos is 8 Generation, 8 Ingratiating, $13.00. And you've got Mars Crusader at 13 Sai, 13 And we, Nessie, $19.00. Horse we're going to have a look at here is Asfura. The replay I picked out here was the Oakley Plate. She's obviously been in the Galaxy and the Quokka since, but um, Nico, tell us why you like her. This is fresh last campaign. I will say I think Bologna Patina is going to Sydney, so there'll be some deductions to this market probably. This is a great run, uh, only beaten by Uncommon James and uh, Lofty Structure. You like watching this replay, but uh, I think she's got a very good setup here on Saturday. She's first up. Um, she's a mare that sort of fires fresh, and I think 1,100 metres is where we sort of see the best of her. Uh, you look back through sort of a lot of her best wins. They're at this distance, and uh, I think this – Matt probably sets up really well for her as well. You know, you got Midwest who's probably going to cross and lead her. And then aside from him, maybe Carlos goes forward from 10. There's not a lot of speed. So I think Mitch Aiken, um, although he's probably not the most fashionable jockey, he's a jockey who's got the job done on this horse multiple occasions. He gave her a great ride in the Quokka. And you know, he's a, a jockey that's, you know, well associated with her, giving you rides in seemingly all her track work and jump outs and trials. So 
I think he just parks him behind the speed from the draw. And uh, on a day where I thought her and Benedetta might be the two you're really looking to steam into, she just seemed a, a better price given she's probably got a better CV and I think in a worse race. So I was pretty happy to uh, sort of label her as one of the maybe the the best of the day um, on a day where it looks pretty tricky. Uh, I don't know if you want to be sort of diving into too many of those favourites, um, especially sort of now, maybe once we've seen the yard or the pattern, a few things like that, we could uh, potentially get involved. But uh, I thought as for uh, just ticked a lot of boxes and at the price, I was sort of surprised she wasn't closer to 280 than 380. Um, you'd probably get around $3 on the day after deductions, but seemed like a, uh, a pretty fair price to me, DK. And is flying. Yep, good grease old. and trial. Yeah, that, that smoked. And then I was listening to Henry and he said, Mitch got off and said, this is going best it's ever gone. So it feels as best as she ever has. So um, so she's she's back. I, what I, what group? I, she, I really think she'll win a group one this prep. So I'm just, I don't know which, which one it is. Is it the Moyer or the? Probably Man, Moyer, Moyer. Or Yeah, many, one of those. So um, yeah, she's, she's, um, she could go to another another level this prep. Uh, looking at the way she's come back. So um, yeah, that uh, looks a very, very suitable race for her to kick off in on Saturday. Yeah, I think they pulled the right rein going to that race instead of taking on the mares. It looks like it, it lacks a bit more depth. So, um, yeah, I think she's going to be uh, right in that and uh, just could get the perfect run and it just could be the perfect race for her. Mm. She's a lot tougher. I thought uh, all, she did really well last prep and she fought on super hard in the last uh, couple of starts that I've seen her as for her. So she's a lot tougher than I probably gave her credit for. And um, even though she's uh, she hasn't won since uh, the prep before, um, I think you're right. It's, it's her time to sort of shine here, and she might have really matured. But uh, horse like magic time, Nico. Yeah, it's got talent. Uh, you can definitely sort of line her up. Uh, she got that what two dollar twenty sp against Alencia last start. That looks pretty well for this, and that's her only defeat. So um, has beaten Paracel. So definitely a chance. It's just how forward she's going to be. You know, first up off a bit of a break. I thought her trials and jump outs were, were pretty good. Um, Thought she may be looking for 1,200 metres off the trial, so I didn't think she was as sharp as they as Fora, and she's probably going to give her a head start. So definitely think she's probably one of the key dangers as well with probably Kalos. I would probably have in there and ingratiating if he found anywhere near his best would probably in the finish on a dry track. But um, I just think from an ability point of view, she's probably got him covered and just could get the uh, the dream run. So there seems to be uh, a lot in her favour. Beautiful. All right, Benedetta Asfura. We're starting to build a bank nicely, and then we get to one of the trickier races, the Memsey Stakes. I wish I wins come up favourite here, $3.70. The boys were talking earlier about the uh, the funny setup there. Mr. Brightside, $4.40. Alligator Blood, four sixty. Princess Grace being back nine into seven fifty. dollars Osipenko, $10. Anavisto, $11. Duke de Sessa is $21. Amenable, $21. The Inevitable from Tassie, first up. New trainer. Brunton's gone. Under there, twenty six dollars, and then you got Aegon, uh, thirty one dollars, and Bankmore, one of Waldy's horses, at fifty one dollars, and then Steinem, fifty one, non conformist, seventy one, and uh, good old Bander Snatch and Western Empire round out the market. Horse that you like here, Nico, is uh, DK's old uh, favourite, Mister Brightside, and uh, big win this. I thought it was a massive win. Uh, we ended up backing him out of the yard because of how well he paraded and probably how fit he was. First up, I wasn't sort of expecting that after seeing him in the Lawrence. No, first up last spring, I think it was much fitter for this occasion. I think this run will um, it'll set him up well for this race. I know there's probably a trainer thought he could be a bit flat out of this given it was a fast run race, but just seeing how forward he was in the yard, um, I'm probably leaning not towards that fear. I think he had enough sort of fitness base to handle that. And uh, he's going to have to do it tough here from the wide draw again. You know, Barry 15, uh, Craig's probably going to have to follow Alligator Blood across. I was listening to the radio and that seemed like that would be the plan. So uh, with a bit of speed drawn underneath him, I think Ana Visto probably leads Alligator Blood, Princess Grace and Western Empire, probably a bit of the fly in the ointment for him. That he, they could sort of keep him trapped deep. But I think you're back in Willow. If he you know, if you go f sort of the first few hundred metres and he ends up one out, one back, well, I think he's definitely the horse to beat then. Um, just with the potential, he could have a map advantage and I wish I win, even though that horse, you know, looks like he's drawn a better barrier. I think, uh, you know, I'd rather have 15 for Mr. Brightside than one I wish I win, given their racing patterns. So I sort of thought at the current prices, I'd probably rather back Mr. Brightside and probably save Alligator Blood just because I know where they'll be in the run. They'll be out there and go and you're probably going to have to catch him. Then back, I wish I win. He's, I think, I wish I win's the best horse in the race. Uh, but just from Barry number one, it's not the greatest beginner. Um, and then with the potential speed in this race, I can't really see too many of them falling in a hole. Like I, I just don't know where the gaps are going to come. If the fence is off, it's probably a different scenario, isn't DK? Because if he can get, you know, run up the fence, even if it is inferior ground, he's probably on the best horse, Luke Nolan. Best but horse, yeah. They can overcome that. If they're racing tight. 
I think it makes it a little bit tricky for him. Well, they're going to be on their bikes. I mean, that 1,400, that's what throws the spanner in the works here, the 1,400 metre start at Caulfield. It's a quirky start. It's less than a furlong till they start turning. It's uphill. Um, so Alligator Blood and Mr. Brightside are going to be on their bikes, aren't they? And uh, Trumpy won't want to drive up. Uh, horse first up with grand final down the track. Um, you know, you can see him buried on the rail where those two good horses, strong on paces, are going to be, you know, up the front and, yeah, makes for a great race. But, yeah, but you can see how Craig was happy to use him first up early, wasn't he? He didn't. He, he wasn't mucking around out of the gates first up. No, 100%. So he knew he was the – his boy said, this horse is fit, you know, and um, second up, even fitter. Craig won't be scared to, to use him against Mr. Alligator, the, the horses that are first up, you know. So um, I think that's his advantage, isn't it, having that first up run – and I think with Ana Vista on the race, um, you know, her first up win last campaign, she nearly broke the clock how fast she went early and kept running. So he, he, he wants that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think that that high pressure, I think if you're back in Mr. Brightside, you're probably back in anyhow tough he is. Like he's going to have to overcome a tough run, but I think he's going to do that. And if you're probably on the I wish I win, you're, you're back and he gets luck. I think that's probably the race, really. And I, I, I just back to him. I know where there was some – and Scoot and – well, yeah, yeah, it's right to doubt him. And, and when you want to get him beat at short odds, it's always a thing. Be very careful at short odds first up. So I don't mind – didn't mind them saying, you know, oh, he's vulnerable here, he's vulnerable here. But you saw what he did. I mean, are you converted now, you blokes up there, that, you know, to go that fast first up and still be dominant? You, you know, you're happy that he's he's a proper horse? He did drift. We were, we were, I can't yeah. remember either of us opposing him. I, I, we were opposed to, uh, that someone had chimed in. No, Scoot made him the way of the day, if you, we if, thought, you don't, if you want to remember. Well, I didn't. I didn't. So. <laughs> I took him. It, it was, was 250 into evens, and we were, we were saying we couldn't believe they chimed straight into 250 on a Wednesday when yeah. they, when you could wait, and we thought you'd get $3. And I think you got you, you did get back out to the original price. I, just, I was just surprised that they all sort of clammed over him, and it was just a captain obvious horse, and I guess that's what happens sometimes in those early markets. They just can't help themselves by by knocking the price around early. But um, I, I love the horse, and he's been a great horse for me and you, and probably you too as well, DK. I found him at some big prices, but and I'm a believer, like 100% yeah, but believer, but there's there's two horses that... And that race came like that was a lot stronger race on paper post-race than I ever thought it would be hmm. pre-race. So his, his effort was was huge, and that's probably why I want to oppose him this time, to be honest. Uh, like I think that was too big a run. Too and, big, yeah. That's yeah, and I think he's going to be... I think he's going to have to put in a bigger run here. And yeah. It just would be abnormal, even though he's such a consistent horse. Uh, it's going to have to be a great ride and a huge performance to justify. Uh, whereas, you know. This, this just looks like a gut buster race. And I think that well, there's yeah. a couple of like big queries. Like Princess Grace was huge. Princess Grace drawn up. low. Osapenko drawn low. But does does Princess Grace want a really tough but run But she wasn't in a hard run race. She was in a bullshit wait uh, for age race where they sprinted up a furlong. Ugh. It's just that's going to bring her on, and a soft draw, she's going to land right there. But is it her outer limit, though? I just don't know what's going to happen. Like 1,400, tougher race. It I'm is first sure. up, for sure, but I think with that run under her belt, she'll be hard. Like, she's just going to be in the right spot, and it could be that race. It could be that race. Also, Pinko and he's Princess Grace his, are going to be in the right spot. Well, that's a, he's really the X Factor horse. Like he went for a bath uh, late, Osipenko, but he's still got his uh, his his uh, he's got there. Yeah. He's an entire. He's desperate to win a Group One, and Chris Waller. This is the just looks like a complete set play for Osipenko, and I think what was it uh, was it the prelude that uh, he missed the start, bungled the start, and roared home at Caulfield that day. That was when it was absolutely huh? dogging down. Was it? it was some remember crazy that, weather? Remember conditions. that day? I can just see Waller and Zara putting this horse right into the race, and if there's a knockout runner um, that could just be in the right spot, depending on how the track plays, I thought Osipenko's effort in the uh, behind Fangirl was absolutely enormous. Yeah, it's a, the more I looked at it, the more it was just a great race. Um, I got sort of alligator blood, Princess Grace, Osipenko with the three I came to, but I can't back. I wish I win. If it wins, just too good. If he, it, it's just if he wins, and he's on an Everest prep, this is the run I can't back him in. I could back him in an Everest if he runs well in this, but I couldn't back him in this race no matter what. It's hmm. just if it wins, I lose. It's a cracking race. The inevitable's a, a bomb fresh horse, but uh, and he ran huge in the All Star Mile, but uh, he's he's going to be set a task too, Barrier Eleven, but. Uh, stranger things that happen. Uh, like with the draws just worked out perfectly to set, uh, set a, the height, the right, the height, uh, the height race. It's, right it's, race. Uh, all the all the fringy chances have drawn perfect. The 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 better horses have got tough uh, decisions to make, and and one's going to be in a bad spot and have to yeah, overcome great, it. Great race. That's mm -hmm. why we're on the kick off the spring carnival, Nico. Yeah, exactly. You've got, got a great probably group. Three of the three of the best five in Australia going yeah. around, really, and so. all got their quirks where they're drawn and. And stuff like that. Nothing's sort of drawn idea. I think it'd be a completely different race if I wish I drew eight and the other two are out there. Like it's a whole different setup. Then him drawing one just oh. might create a few angles. But yeah, if the fence is off, then 
then it's but sort it might of, be what he needs, you know, yeah, being exactly. fresh and a bit underdone. He may may one may be the key to him, you know. It's that that's the beauty of it. I think he's been what three dollars out to three seventy. I sort of laughed when I saw the prices on Monday or Tuesday, and I reckon I, he'll start five dollars plus. I, I would have thought that you you might be able to get five dollars about this horse. What do you boys reckon? Well, I wish I win. You'll get four. I don't think you get five. I'd be surprised if you got five about him, but um, I think you'll definitely get four at some stage. Might be scared. I'd be Wally very surprised if it starts Well, I have to bet $5 for anyone who wants it. Anyway, not my lay of the day. <laughs> but uh, I reckon I, if you were ever going to take this horse on, this is uh, this is where you take him on. I wish I win. So it's going to be great racing. And I think the key to it is going to be Nico's yard. So there's a fair few people that uh, I think Nico's subs are tripled with the free lick of the ice cream for the last week or so. Make sure you get on board. So we're going to change the link tomorrow and then uh, join up for the entire spring and make sure you get uh, Nico's yard three to five minutes before every race with staking advice. So uh, you'll be betting exactly how Nico is. And you can also, when, he, when he's having a buy, you can also find and uh, a lot of runners, good good price runners, where he says scope or this horse, he's, he's got second pick. There was a horse, Centrify, that won at the Valley. You had, I think, second second or third pick there, Nico, and it's, it's ended still, up winning at $21. Uh, still blowing. I didn't have something on it. If oh, it's Corfield or Flemington, I'd probably do, but Mooney Valley, uh, I think it's going to be last. How's yeah. he going to win from there? But he's just a good horse, isn't he? Centrify, great ride, big, it? it? was great to win and a great ride. Mm. You, so, you sort of have to win from back, weaving through at the valley. So yeah, I can see the why blue you horse just trigger. pulled out and it was the winner. And then this thing just said, "Get out of the way." Charles Crazy. Passed it. Anyway, it's going to be a, uh, a cracking day out at Caulfield. As we said, it's uh, it's going to be beautiful. So hopefully we found uh, a couple of winners there or um, helped uh, solve the puzzle a little bit better. Uh, punting form is what Nico and I both use. I can take it anywhere and have a bet and uh, do the form. I've had a squeeze at the top spot steamers, so hopefully I can uh, shed a little bit of light there. But uh, puntingform.com.au is the tool I use, and it's just beautiful business. It's so, so easy and fast to do the form. Walt up at uh, Randwick. It's uh, it's a much better card. It's uh, obviously very very tricky this week, but um, sort of got a bone again for Sydney Racing. It looks a much better uh, card than last week. You've been looking the same fields as me. Yeah, it's great. Jesus Christ, it's great. I'm excited. Very excited about it. With the highway, or the midway, all of it. Okay. I think there's lots of winners to be found, and I think you'll nail it. Race yeah. three at Randwick is the first one we're going to have a look at. Dancing alone, Bryce Hayes, Nash, hot. Nash Wheeler's riding this one, $2.40. They haven't missed this one. Ohio, five fifty. Wave Rider Boy, $6.00. Tintuki, nine fifty. Avebury, $14.00. Rain Bill, 16 Molly Nails, 16 No Way Ever, 21 Ruben Oki, $21.00. And I won't worry about the rest of the chances there. We're going to have a look at a couple of uh, different replays here. The first one is uh, Tintuki in the white. With the uh, the white blaze and the and the red hat back on the inside, so it was a really good ride from JVO here. They went really slow, probably way too slow, which uh, took away the leader's advantage. And he just stuck right to its tail and uh, got to the outside of it, which was important too. Certainly, better ground coming to the middle, so uh, he couldn't have ridden it any better from the draw that it had on on this day. Third horses at King of Naples or something like that. I yep. think its form and all the races it's been in have been really tying in well in, mm. in Sydney in these sorts of races for probably the last couple of months. And um, I just think that uh, a hard fit horse, uh, Tintuki, sort of drawn middle. Uh, he's um, he's drawn ideally hard fit, as we say. The, the favourite's drawn one. Find that you know very difficult um, to, to chime into a horse that's probably going to be midfield or worse from one. Uh, on a on a, what hopefully will be a, a little bit rain affected, not too bad. So the inside may be not ideal. Soft six at the moment with a four meter rail and uh, wave rider boy have had enough of him. Um, so sort of trying to find an angle around those two. Tin is the first one that um, I think suits that uh, ideally from the middle draw with JP back on it. Hmm, but we're gonna have a look at Avebury from the John O'Shea yard. So it's in the uh, the red, white, and blue. So the the white epaulets. So it's blue sleeves and the red sort of second back on the fence there. So this getting is, yeah, a trail. Second trial, uh, sort of steaming in behind them. Hmm. There doesn't do a heck of a lot, but yeah. um, like doesn't uh, not ask for a heck of a lot. We can see traveling really well without being asked. And this this horse has got a bit of X factor about it. Uh, perfect horse for O'Shea. I like that he sort of tends <coughs> to get them. Pretty fit first up, and this horse is probably going to need that. Again, drawn that middle section, a horse that's going to be sixth, seventh, sort of midfield and get to the right part of the track, hopefully. I just think sort of $13. It's just that sort of race where, as I said, sort of wave rider boy, $5.50. I thought he had his chance in at Caulfield. May not have got onto his right leg and let down, but he's had his chances in Sydney, and the only time he's won was sort of a miracle ride from uh, McAvoy. So 
you know, Dancing Alone again, with glue on shoes coming off and synthetical filler obviously having a few issues with its feet, getting deeper into its prep. It's got a bit of that, uh, what's that thing, that the horse that uh, went to Sydney, uh, down to Melbourne of, of gaze that's got beat two in a row down there. Just as they go deeper into their prep, the horses with niggly feet issues, I'm happy to sort of take them on a bit. So, yeah, uh, the hard fit Tim Tukey just off speed hopefully gets the middle and uh, Avery, the, the knockout fresh horse, that's, that's my angle there. As I said, it's a pretty tough card. Hmm. It's an interesting 1,000. It's all the forms around sort of 1,000 metres dancing alone. And some of the wins have been visually impressive. Look, some some massive wins overcome, well, I don't know, maybe Wide like draws uh, back, average rides. Starts. Yeah, just things going She's wrong. She's found a way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's definitely not a horse you'd really, if it drew middle again, it's a bit like the, the not the Memsey, is it the Memsey? Yeah. Where we just race we just talked about where uh, it's a, the, the draws of, have made the race a, a good betting race, whereas if you sort of reverse them all, she's probably getting to the middle and mm. extremely hard to beat if everything was was right with her for sure. Exciting race. And Bryce and Nash are a Exciting pretty combo. good combination. Yeah, I think if we had a, had a look at the punning form stats, I'm, I'm tipping they go all right. It looks like they are profitable. Wave rider boy, we back to uh, last night out of the yard at Caulfield, and I thought that was, that was her day. Like she was as fit as you'll get, like muscled right up. I would – be, I wouldn't be shocked at all if she even trained off from that. So getting deep into her campaign, there's definitely no improvement left. So um, that was like absolute D-Day for her for mine. And uh, with no improvement yes, left to come from the yard, I wouldn't be surprised if she's, um, you know, probably comes off that run a little bit, to be honest. When I was trying to sort of line them up too, the Tintuki and it are at similar stages of their prep and not much between them as horses, to be honest, and you're just getting double the price, uh, Tin Turkey. So that's basically why I went that way. If, you, if it was $10 and Tin Turkey was 5 I probably would have gone that way. Just, yes, for a similar, you know, you got two horses that are their peak in their preparation hard fit. They're probably going to do something similar. They're very unlikely to improve, but you get double the price one over the other. So that was, yeah. Lay the price, Chubby, about evens the place, or so $2.50 you might have to offer to take on J-Mac the slot. Just settle down, mate. Just get the, just get one of the roughies on. <laughs> so you can be. Uh, we've got lots of different. Don't look for the double punters. pain. Don't don't look for the. Don't look for the double pain. DK might get on there and, and lay at the place to show a little bit of flair, something different. No, mind that those days are over. <laughs> what the flair days? Or doing something a bit different? Funny, it's. Uh, I was listening again. Wayne Walters just saying, you, like, oh my god, it was a very like, the blow up was funny, but I think mean, Walt might even might remember that Wayne Walters was a. A superstar trainer when he first came out here from New Zealand, like horses like Torbeck, twenty six to three fifty in a maiden, twenty six to three fifty. Then won twenty three races, group group races, Astralin, Cobra. When I was a kid, he was a superstar. And then, but he said, he said, um, he said, as soon as he had kids, he said before kids it was all about scheming and winning, and then when you had kids, focus changes to, you know, all the you know longevity and just doing something. So yeah, they mate, my my, my flare days. Bit behind me, Scooty, like like Wayne Walters. It's so sad argue. to hear that, and it's so, like I've had that conversation with Anthony Cummings, and like he said, he paid. I think his boys both went through what he some grammar school, whatever in Sydney. They'd be nice and tough, and he said, mate, he paid every dollar of it punting. Yeah, you know, it wasn't it wasn't training that earning money. It was punting, mm. and now he, he said, I don't even think about having a bet ever. That, that's a story of hope that you can do it, that you can back a winner, and you can. Get well, those New Zealand traders used to be able to hide them over there or have yeah. a nice horse over there and bring them over here and everyone didn't really know, you know. Mm. Now, they know, someone in the grandstands put an offer on the horse before the horse is back into scale to weigh in. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's impossible to hide anything now from, from New Zealand perspective, but, um, yeah, we used to get some great trainers, didn't we, like the, the wheelers. L- Lamings hid that name dropper pretty well. That was 26 into $5. Yeah, they hid it pretty well. Everyone in the world <laughs> knew about it, but everyone had a different set. It was great. It was like Timmy Martin. He'd tell one bloke one, the other bloke the other, and uh, no one really knew. It was great. That's an interesting story. I didn't know that that was the, that was the same Wayne Walters, uh, yeah, DK. Yeah, mate. He was a, he was a winner. It's Seymour he trained at, and um, who was the bloke? Alan Jones. Alan Jones in the day said he's got him over and – Brian got you know Brian Jorgensen. He had all the blokes tied up with him. All could bet and get on in those days. And did they pull some tricks? And then he had those horses. Or they were Astralin, Cobra, Torbeck. I mean, go and look up. Like, they were superstars back in the mid early mid eighties, winning all the group races at Caulfield and whatnot. Yeah, he was a superstar trainer. My motors, even though he looked a he's still going all right. Yesterday, he, he was a weapon. He's still going all right. He still, still can train a winner by the look of him. <laughs> what they had four winners yesterday. Four. That's all right. With Kate swinging off him, like, he's had a big day. 
<laughs> oh, it's just remarkable. This, this he's, he's, the sort of, he's the sort of guy that Racing.com needs to get around and do a big story. Like, that's that's fantastic. <laughs> well, it was funny yesterday. Well, it was beautiful. Even Terry McCall, if he's never stuck Lost for a it. word, was stuck for a word. He couldn't come <laughs> on. <laughs> Old Eagle Kelton was hit for six as well. Oh, yeah. so it was, it was great TV. So have a look at the Little Birdie TV uh, Twitter handle and you can see his little interview post-race and then you can actually see the horse or the – the little bump that he co- he cops two starts before at Bordertown, and there was absolutely nothing in it. The horse- Said it got knocked off its feet, Scoot. Knocked off its feet. <laughs> oh god, it was a fair. We don't tap exaggerate us old blokes. <laughs> so it got windburn from no, the other horse running past it. Wasn't it? A bit of sugar on top. Oh, and Mayonnaise. the horse. Uh, uh, what are you going to do? Protest against a winner that's one by four? I wouldn't have thought so. It's, uh, it was great theatre. So you need to see more of that stuff in racing. I, I miss Greg Ryan absolutely. having the choker hold left hand on it while he's air whipping at the right where the whip's not getting within eight feet of the horse. And it, but it's always on the off side of the camera. He used to be the best at that. Oh, I miss those days. Bring him back. Uh, the fake I love whipping. The, the fake whipping with yeah, the vice like grip. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they got a hold of it. Yeah. Beautiful. Next, the next race we're going to have a look at is uh, is race eight at Randwick. It's Chelmford, uh, Chelmford Stakes, and it's over sixteen hundred metres. Think it over as a favourite here. Easy favourite. Two dollars thirty five out to two sixty. I thought it was a good run first up. Hinged is four dollars forty. Montefiore five fifty into five dollars. Duay a bit of a nice run, given it was uh, seventh. Nine dollars. Mawanga eleven dollars. Big money for it first up. Uh, Lindemann is fifteen dollars. Major Beal nineteen. Knights Order is twenty one dollars. Then you got Bowl Mac at uh, twenty six dollars and bigger odds. The rest. Uh, the replays here are going to have a look at uh, the Wink Stakes lead up. Oh, gosh. Well, that's Princess Grace on the inside. There's runs here. Think it over everywhere. three wide with cover, pulling around the uh, major bill. You've got uh, Monophilia way back in the white cap there, sort of third last. Dewey getting checked 87 times as I'm riding my 70 to 1 ticket, like I did first up last time when it chased asses the whole way up the straight. Uh, there's the winner of the Memsey darting up the fence now, um, Princess Grace. And the mighty fangirl, the blind squirrel, the nut on Gee. the outside of me currently uh, finally found a winner for the first time in his career. <laughs> Interesting. Um, when, it, when it sort of leveled up there, think it overlooked. You thought it was just going to put four But around. that's the problem, right? So he was, I think he was like 400 days off there. And now you like, I've got no doubt he's the, well, I wouldn't say he's the only weight for age horse, but he's the weight for age horse in this race. But if you've got to have some big balls to be chiming into six to four for mine off the back of that um, run where it sort of it did blow out. And will it need another one? Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'd rather I'd rather probably side with a, a Montefilia who had Dylan Gibbons on there. He was obviously told to to look after the horse very early, so he's dragged it right out of the race and and sort of let it run home. Now it goes J Max soft draw, probably lobs in the first five, and uh, you know it was better price earlier than week and, and yesterday. But um, I'd probably have it closer to favourite, and then. I'd rather go wider in this race and try and find uh, different angles because I, I don't think there was much between that that those runners as that mm. uh, that race showed and and uh, you know pretty slowly run average race on paper too. I'd, I'd rather be trying to find something at odds here and and uh, or or backing Monophilia because I, I just like Waller. You know, definitely know Waller targeting. Yeah, he, ta- well, he, t- he definitely targets certain horses, certain races, and, and this just looks like that horse was given a, a barrier trial first up. And most of his intent is jockeys, isn't it? Like he, he throws nine runners out and then makes up his mind what he's going to do and gate three, Dylan to, to James McDonald sort of stands out. Dewey was huge in that, but it's probably going to be set a, a similar task again. And it might, it, she might be the one that sprouts a bit now looking for sort of 2,000 metres, I, I thought perhaps. But uh, what happens here? Knight's order goes goes forward thinking well, over Lindemann. And, got, and does, does Hinge just – do they do they jam Hinge just to make – just well, to try and set it up? Major Beal, Knight's order, Who you Mao. I don't think they're going to walk here. No. They may walk once they find their spots, but I don't think they're going to walk early because uh, – They've all got to find a spot, haven't they? Uh, if nothing else, and gays aren't going to hand it up. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, yeah, it's, it's a pretty tricky race. I think that Monofield is just the most solid option for mine on setup. And uh, if you say, if you assume that she's improved this prep with the with the trainer change, you assume that she's going to improve with the run under the belt, rider change, gate change. She's just got so many ticks in the box compared to what she had first up. You're getting a quarter of the price, but I'd probably, I'd say that's probably fair. Mm. Um, for everything she doesn't, um, yeah. There, there's a there's a horse to watch down the bottom there. That's probably today, Saturday's not its day, but I, I do want to. I'm a bit of a man's voice junkie, but I do want to see what he does during the prep. And my other goal in life is to work out what the hell David Payne's doing with Navajo Peak, putting it through the weight for age races, and <laughs> and what race he's actually aiming this horse up for. Because 
holy crap, it went like a rocket first up. Pretty and, good effort. And it could have won a race somewhere on that. So I don't know what it's doing in this race, but uh, yeah. up you go, David. It's just crazy sometimes when you see a horse going well and then they put it in that wrong race completely or maybe they've got a bigger plan for they're trying the to hide it for a handicap somewhere down the line, well, fair well, enough. Guess what, David, is that what he's doing? It. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's not as if it's ready for the Melbourne <laughs> Cup, is it? Like, where, where's he going? Uh, Nico, DK, any any thoughts? I just thought the the race shape in the Chalmers was going to be a lot different to what we saw in the Winks. Like like Walt said, a few of those um, were Yadin Knights or Yadin Huya Mile. They're probably going to go a lot faster, I would have thought. And it is a race where I think Knights sort of might even won this race last year or gone very close. Like it is a race where the on paces can sort of stick on. Uh, oh, weird race. I think the horse will be better suited under a faster tempo, which is generally what we see from him is Mawanga. But he was pretty poor first up. But he he probably Did is you, the other horse. I'm just not cutting you off because I'm interested because I, I was yeah. I thought he'd run well there and he got beat so far. Was yeah, there any like terrible. subsequent report about him, him or anything? I don't. I tried to find um, out if they found anything wrong with him, but he I just think looked it like was he just went like a busted off day by the yeah. sound of things. And he so. can do that. That horse can he? He's a bit weird, weird horse. Yeah, like you look back at his absolute best, and he he probably is the other weight for age horse in the race, and he might just find a, a bit better setup with a, a fast run race. Tyler Schiller going on for the first time, you know, maybe it just sparks something up in him. You might get sort of thirteen or fourteens on the day. I reckon you'll definitely get better price, hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think, and I think think it over is the same. Like what he got up two dollars thirty. Now he's two eighty. You're probably looking at three twenty on the day. The way the market's going. If Mo Wong wins, I'll peroxide me. He's got no chance. It's a bit weird that oh, just think it over the price. A lot of people are declaring it. It's um, what, and you probably could on numbers from a while ago, but it's uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the betting does with think it over. Just betting wise, oh, you might get four dollars, and I probably think that's about right. I'd say four bucks, and then so what's the money going to keep coming for Montefilla? Do I will be spec'd? I wouldn't be surprised if Montefilla started a little bit shorter, just because of McDonald, but only because of McDonald. They can't start much shorter, and, if they, then, and there's nothing else they can really back. If they say they're going to go cl- sit closer, it might go off again. Oh, well, they won't on. because of the, the draw, but he'll do it anyway. Mm. Mm. And what about Hinged? It's a camel. No good. It's not much good. It's a good horse. It's very honest. It just doesn't have a killer blow. Mm. Just can't put a race away. Can't, and if you put more race. speed into a race, it just can't. How's it going to put the race away? You've got to jam it. Yeah. Mm, and pray. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's the end of that then. We'll. Uh, what about Nature Strip, Walt? I don't know. I, I spent. I like it. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I looked retired. at the riders. I had a, a conniption when I saw that Jack Lloyd was on. In secret, and then I saw he's on every one of their horses and had another conniption. And uh, then I went back and tried to have an honest look at the race, and holy cow, it's just um, like Eduardo's five bucks. I thought he's retired seven times and he's got drawn one. Like, are you sure that you've got to oppose him? So you look at the race and you go, well, there's got to be a betting race. Zach from um, middle draw looks to get a perfect run with in secret just behind him. And Nature Strip, I, I, mate, he's, he's older than, how old is he? 26, 27? Nine. I he ran in that 92 uh, Caulfield <laughs> Cup. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Do you have got any opinion? I've got none. Don't know. I, I, I'm very confused. If I had a free bet, I'd probably back in secret just out of confusion, Nico. Yeah, I was thinking that in secret, she's not really a 1,000-meter horse. Like most of her best form was 1,200. Uh, I don't even think she's run at 1,000. So that, that would be interesting for her if she did. It was very early days, so at least not at this level. Balony Patina is probably the one that's best suited to the 1,000 fresh. Um, her and Remark maybe come into play a bit at sort of uh, longer odds and Zapatero is very good fresh. could be a very strange race because Nature Ship's drawn wide. What, what they sort of do with the tactics there, that was, does Eduardo just bust himself up and want to lead from barrier number one or does Nature Strip cross him? And then in secret, Zach Lloyd, he's got a fair decision to make there from five. Do I go with them? Do I give them too big a head start? So it's a lot of um, decisions to make for an apprentice. But he's a he's a star on the rise, isn't he? So you know, I, it's um, a, it's I had someone race. DM, the old DM, oh, well, Nature Strip must be unbeatable because J-Max chosen to ride it over in secret. I'm like, mate, he's won about $25 million on the horse. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure it was it was surely a loyalty go. Imagine if he had a got off it. Like, oh, my God, some people find some Funny crazy angles. angles. But at 1,000 metres, like the, the, what you say about in secret, I think that's that's probably what sets me off with the, the junior burger rider as opposed in a like 1,200-metre horse in a 1,000-metre race. You really want Nash or J-Mac or someone of that level that understands – thousand meter speed and what a 1200 meter horse has to do to overcome that you know they've got to be a little bit more aggressive they've got to make sure they put him into the race a little bit earlier or her into the race a little bit earlier and 
And um, if he makes one little mistake on this horse, I'd be surprised if it um, can overcome it. All I know is there's going to be so many comments about Zach Lloyd in the YouTube thing. <laughs> I'm not. Well, well it's, it's just fucking. That's the only cares, thing I know mate, about mate. this race. He's 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 going really well with his claim. He's you know he's a profitable rider. I think off off the bat, you know. But yeah, um, yeah and and get often you got Don Byrne and James there who are far from silly making these decisions, and you know they're choosing to leave senior riders in the. In the room to put Zach on, so they've obviously got a really solid opinion of him, and and um, yeah, just mind boggles me. But every each their own. I'm going to get you a shirt. I love Zach Lloyd. Racingwatch.com.au for more of Johnny's uh, commentary and analysis. It's very good stuff. You can see uh, last week with Diamond Dealer knows what he's talking about. If you're not a believer now, you never will be. But uh, you can also get uh, get it via Telegram too. So it's uh, it's exciting stuff, and it's uh, nearly seven days a week. I don't know how he gets time to uh, sleep or do anything other than ten pin bowl. So um, he's still got handled man. again last night. Some lady had to give a seventy starter game, and she just absolutely dished me up. It was brutal. <laughs> it's a bloodbath. <laughs> Uh, don't know how he makes it out alive out of Mount Warren Bowls Club. Donny. Donny uh, had Hocker Hay run fourth. I think he's starting to get back in the zone. Oh, Donny had a good winner at uh, the sunny coast, and he's up and about his horses at Wyong tomorrow. So let's hear from uh, Donny. G'day, fellas. Wyong Cup Day on Friday. Give Calipore a massive cheer. But the tip comes up in race four, Peace Officer. Nash jumps on. This horse has been trolling really well. We're mapping the perfect sport, one out, one back. Reyes is, is the favourite and made danger. It looks very hard to beat, but I think Peace Officer at around $5 is a great each way price. I don't think you can miss a hole, so pretty keen to back Peace Officer race for a mile each way. And on Saturday, we've got Eagle Farm, race seven, Zarasto. It's been flying since it's gone to Tony Gollan. It'll land on the lead, control the race, and should kick away and boot clear around till it's 50. Seems fair enough. So the two bets are Warren Race 4 on Friday, Peace Officer, Eagle Farm on Saturday, Race 7, Zarastro. Good luck. Oh, it's triggering material, that uh, <laughs> Peace Officer. I was going to say uh, I'll run the marathon with him next year if it beats Razors, but that's unrealistic. That is just serious. I couldn't drive it. I couldn't ride it. I couldn't finish it on a bike. So uh, I'll think of something, but I'll go ahead there with him there. If it beats Razors, I'll eat it. Well, oh, peroxide, yeah, I'll, I'll share a bottle of bleach. Why would you box my hair? It's bad enough as it is. Can't be worse than what it is. It is bad enough as it is. I've had to deal with it my whole life. I'll think of something. Maybe I'll donate to his next charity thing or something, but I don't know. But the, the good luck beating Razors. I don't know how Sea Wreath got Razors beat last week, but the world was on it, and it was just absolutely eye-watering stuff. It was pathetic, and hopefully he's banished to the gulags for a long time to think about his actions. We've got J-Mac. Is it J-Mac? Oh, here? Yeah, J-Mac Gate 4. It'll be in front of a uh, peace officer in the run, I would imagine, this time, and good luck. Good luck trying to beat it. Mm. We need luck. All right, and then race seven, number eight, Calipore. I know the horse is absolutely flying, so it's uh, knocking the door down, so fingers crossed for Donnie. His horse can win. Haven't had a look yet at the Wine Cup. And then uh, Eagle Farm race seven, number 10, Zarastro. This horse is uh, beating him up up there, or it did last start, and having a good look there. But uh, horses like Ned's Gully going well, Hell I Am, and uh, Mass Destruction, all those sort of horses. So, yeah, it's obviously uh, going to be hard to beat there. Let's have a look at uh, the top sport, Steamers. And the first one here is Samillion, one of DK's favourite drinks. It's uh, Morpheville Race 6, number 1, 6.50 at 4.20 there. Uh, the danger here, I had a quick look at this one, is from um, the O'Shea Clark and Yard. The horse sweetened. It's only carrying 52.5 kilos, so I think it's opened up $2.50 favourite. And Semyon has had its uh, has had the big gelding operation there, so we're doing well to beat sweetened with only 52.5 kilos. So I think semion has got uh, 60 kilos. What so. channel do you watch Adelaide Racing on? Dot com. That's where you get Wayne Walters at Mount Gambier. They still do it. Mount Gambier, Wayne Walters stuff. Got to watch it. The Eagles on there. You got to be on a back and win. Eagle. Eagle. He's the he's the best over there. The Eagles. So it's worth watching. Auto very, bet. Very rarely you see Team Hawks in Adelaide. Mm. That's oh, a and I, one. You know what? And I don't think it's a great place. Can't try to win around down here. So maybe that's why they're over there. <laughs> maybe they should move their operation to Adelaide. They might be going better. Oh, busted. I don't want them coming after me as well. No comment. They just don't use fit. Maybe they need to start using female riders. That might be a change of fortune for them. These are some camels. <laughs> Expensive camels. <Yeah>. Race, <laughs> race nine. I'd hate to be financing them. Race nine, number uh, number six is our Magnus Toowoomba horse here, 550 at 480. It's uh, one of the DK partials to win sort of 2,000 
dollars here. This is uh, this is a deeper race than I sort of anticipated. It, it run, its run was okay uh, with Shara Goma. I thought uh, last start there was not much between the two runs. If Maybe Shara Gomez was a better run than this horse. I was surprised that this horse has just folded in the market four eighty to four dollars. I thought Lucky Decision was a uh, an improver. I thought Sea Ripple was a rough chance. Uh, this horse, this this race is a bit deep. So um, aware the Toowoomba backs uh, back, back, back uh, runners, uh, especially uh, when it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Beware if, exactly. The That's cash. the most scary part about this this one. It's because they have got horse. nothing else to do at Toowoomba other than get one ready. These one for you, Walt. Race one number two, Sabrenko, two forty at uh, seventeen dollars oh here. It's either the mid. It's got to be the midway because it's Tracy Bartley. Oh my god! You should get seventeen dollars about any horse that ever wins a midway just for doing the form in the midways. They should be on a Monday at Musselbrook. I don't mind them. They are horrific. I don't the, form, mind. the only thing they're good for is that. No one's worked out the form so bad that it doesn't carry anywhere. So they uh, they go to a midweek race and can't can't win. So anyway, no, no idea. Sorry. Cool. Uh, race ten is the next one. So Randwick race ten number six. Our last cash one twenty five at seven dollars. Got the horse, is it? Yeah, yeah. Her. Yeah. One yeah. down the straight. Yes. Got some talent. Definitely. She can train, and it's got the hippo on board. There's plenty going on in that race. You've hey? got a, you've got Walla with a little sneaky New Zealand horse there. You've got um, there's there's plenty going on. I, I, I don't want to form an opinion until the sort of race is over. Obviously, Gaza Blank is a, a nice enough horse. Yeah, Gaza Blank is it? That's Mar. It's from yeah. It's, yeah. it's a nice horse. Yeah. It's a bit it, stiff first up. Very um, stiff last. in the wrong spot. Time to boogie is probably one you're happy to play around. But this Salt Coats looks very scary. Um, yeah, our last cash will cross at seventeen dollars with the hippo. Ooh. There was a good win. It's that. It's yeah. We spoke about this horse last time. She she this this could be a knockout. This one. She can train. Very good trainer. Mm. Yeah. Even Molly Nails is a big price there. It's a it's a good race. It's a deep race. So. What do you think of that form? The our last cash form. Yeah, it won a weak race last start, but did bolt in. So um, you know, it probably goes up there with a the chance, but. Uh, I, I followed Gaza Wanger for a long time, and I think that's that's his right race. Twelve hundred meters, Ramwick drawn out. Like Rose Hill didn't really see me set up, so oh, you you got to be pretty uh, forgiving, I suppose. I think he's been beat at odds on his last three, but um, that did, that did seem a race for him where he could find his best at Ramwick. Well, he's not an inside draw horse, is he? He's sort of been stuck in that spot in the coffin a few times. He's a massive horse. He's got a huge yeah. stride on him, and even see him in the yard, he's he's absolutely huge. So wide draw is definitely a big tick for him. Agree. Two, three hundred meters to wind up here. That's his go. Beautiful. All right. <clears throat> I think that's that's uh, that's the show. So it's it's been a ripper. DK, anything um, around the edges from you, mate? Uh, well, there's no prices up yet because there's two meetings on tomorrow, Nick. The night meetings at Packenham start. Oh, yeah. What's going on there? Yeah, I think. Well, I was talking to Trav about this, and he seems to think maybe because there's no footy on, they've just put a oh, meeting Oh, put a on. meeting on, okay, right. Yeah. It but, did seem early, and I'm not synthetic. Yeah. It just seemed like, yeah, content, okay. Um, no, Seymour, Seymour tomorrow, race three, number eight, Only Love. Remember that horse from Maui the other day, Nico? Only Love. Got held up behind um, Cumbrian Queen or something, should have won. Was having a second run at a mile there. I thought it should have been stepping up in trip prior to that when it ran home at Bendigo and um, he kept it at the mile. He did it, did that with a couple of horses that day, Waller, horses that wanted, bit, wanted the extra trip, but he, he sent them around and they, they got beat because they were looking for the extra trip. So now it steps up in trip, gets plagued shin against a field of, field of goats. So um, she looks like she's got some staying upside. I don't know what price she'll be, but uh, it's a bit of a flashing light run the other day. But um, only love there tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Seymour, Scoot. Race three, number eight. Did Nico only not love. remember it? You've you got to get up early to get one through Nico. Did, did you not remember it? Or? Oh, only love. No, I remember <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, oh, that's right. Sorry, mate. I thought you'd, had, uh, I thought you'd missed a meeting somewhere. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nico was formed in his sleep, I reckon. He yeah, yeah, the yeah. run prior. He did so. run very well. He wanted 2,000 off that Bendigo run. Yeah, exactly. Stepping up in trips at Scone, and he kept it at a mile at Maui of all joints. Now it goes to 2,200. So. Beishin. Oh, I'll get well, that's right. It, it's change over time, too. Like the maidens are getting a lot stronger this time of year. Ollie, C. Williams, J. Carr, Lane, they're all going to the country maidens and things now. I think Willow's going to Bendigo for one ride today. Ollie's going for a couple of It's changed over time. They're all um, want to get on the nice young horses for the spring. The maidens strengthen right up. So um, good time of year. Ollie, straight to Ladbrokes. Love it. Hey? I just, I just love that. it. Yeah, because he's done the deal with He's the next G boss, pumper, all this. Jeez, hey. 
I love it. It's a four. Like, so he's not retiring. Yeah. Like, everyone's carrying on like he's retiring tomorrow. He's not retiring to the end of the year. So it's going to be a swan song for the whole carnival. I just uh, some of the old jockeys you hear a few stories they probably shouldn't tell you after oh, they gosh. retire. I just pray that one day he just lets loose and just you know like the Agassi yeah. book where tell he's on the all. ice and he was in a corner there shaking because he needed more <laughs> ice. If, if, if D Oliver ever came out with the full blooded memoirs, wouldn't it be awesome? Be great. Yeah. Great stuff. All right, the goat. D one Oliver. bet, one win. That'd oh. be the name of the book, wouldn't it? Oh, one miss for him. one. <laughs> I'll miss him. He's <laughs> off, off or on Ollie. Oh, he's a great rider. Uh, he's a good bloke too. All right, cool. I think uh, I think that's the show. Can't wait uh, to see what happens. The Memsey, Sydney, it's just absolute uh, porn. Make sure you jump on board the boys' subscriptions. Get around us. Little Birdie Syndicate, couple of winners yesterday. We're back in business. Um, and, yeah, just, just a great time of year, so get involved. Yeah.